Okay, it's uh, three o'clock. I think we can start our session. So, first of all, uh, welcome to my talk about uh, Deban Java packaging. My, nam my name is Markus Koshani, and I'm a member of the Java team in Debian. Uh, today I want to talk about, um, about our three build systems, which we um, often use in our packaging work, about Ant, Maven, and Gradle. And I want to introduce you to the most important Java terms and concepts. And I want to talk about Java Helper, which is very helpful if you want to package some th something which has no build system at all, or if you want to modify a package which uses a different build system. And in the end, I want to show you some common error messages and um, how you can uh, avoid making mistakes. So, if we talk about Java, then you, all you need to know is um, that source files are, have a suffix called Java. So, our typical Hello World program would look like this. And if you wanted to compile it, you just have to type Java C. Hello world. Now you can see that another file has popped up, a class file. And this file is just bytecode. And one aspect of Java is that everything is compiled to bytecode, which is interpreted by the OpenJDK. So if you compile it here in my system, which is AMD64, it is possible that you can transfer the file to any computer where an OpenJDK is installed, no matter the operating system, no matter the archi architecture, as long as it is supported. And you could run this program just like this. Hello world. So the next step would be something more complicated. Let's imagine you have a program which consists of um, three or four of these Java files. And in Java, it is convention to organize source code in uh, directories called packages. So we have two packages here, compute and engine. And you would compile multiple uh, files like this. And now you have two class files within the compute directory. Um, compiling class files is one thing. If you want to transfer those files, you have to uh, make it more, well, some kind of, um, you want to transport it to another uh, computer, and you want to combine it into one single file. All you have to do is creating a so-called jar file. A jar file is merely a zip archive, and um, all those class files are stored within this single archive. Plus, one file, which is very special to Java, it is called a manifest file. Um, and this is very important later on. So, let's see how we can create a jar file. The command is jar and something like C, we F, the name of your jar, and then the class files you have just compiled. Now you can see that OpenJD tells you it has added a manifest file. That's the so-called default manifest file. And you can take a look inside the jar, like this, and see that the manifest file consists of just two lines, a version and a created byline. Um, manifest files can be much more complex, and you will later see that it is very useful um, to modify this file, because um, there are also information stored like um, the class path, 
another uh, very specific Java term, which basically means where can my program find my libraries on the system. At the moment, it does not know. So you can change the class path within the manifest file, but you can also say, um, you can um, add it to the command line and tell Java to execute the program like this one. So you would call Java hyphen CP, stands for class path, and wait a second. Ah, first of all, let's move our computer to another directory. And then Hmm. No, that's not it. So you would call, of course, the Java C <laughs> command, which is to compile. And then you put the computer on the class path and um, target the compute engine Java file in engine. And now you can compile the engine file. And that's basically how all these um, Java compilation uh, things happen, how, build how builds happen. Um, this is the most simplest case. So if you take a look in your at your compute engine Java file, you can see statements like import compute.compute, .compute, which just means the package compute and the class compute. The package compute and the class task should be imported. And you have just told your compiler that you should look for a compute jar in your test directory. And then um, he knows, OK, there I can find my classes and then compile my um, compute engine Java um, class. This is what happens hundreds of times um, in Debian Java. Nor on a, only on a much um, greater scale. I just wanted to tell you the most basic aspects, but this is, in principle, what happens um, in the, at the core all the time. Now, let's imagine uh, you want to package um, an application which consists of 10 to 100 files, but you realize it has no build system. So what do you do? Um, for example, there are many packages, API packages in um, Java that need, um, well, that we need, and they are uh, available multiple of times in, on the internet. We just need one. So I have pulled two packages from Maven Central, that's a repository for Java files, jar files, and then I see that there's only one directory. Again, that's our namespace, org, OSGI, and then you see a lot of packages, DTO framework, and so on. But you see, there seems to be no, um, no build system. They're just directories and files, source code. So what can you do? Um, you could, um, again, use the Java C command and compile your packages. And you, can you could create a simple script a loop, and then, um, well, somehow you would um, compile all those files. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel because we've created a tool called Java Helper, which just does this work. So in OS OSGI core, uh, there's a file called Java Build. And as you can see, all you have to do is you give your jar file a name, in this case, osgi.core.jar, and point to the directory which contains all those source files. And that's basically it. Java Helper will compile all those files for you and create a jar file called osgi.core. So how can you find more information about the, this uh, Java Helper tool? 
So you would go to user shared doc Java helper. And then we have a nice tutorial in HTML and text. Let's prefer text here. And there you can find all those commands. They are prefixed with JH. And it's pretty similar to the dev helper commands. Uh, at the moment, you only need to know uh, one command. It's called JH underscore build. And that's what you actually do with your Java build file. So like with Debian, uh, Deb Helper, you can choose um, either a file or you can choose to put those commands into your Debian rules file and execute it. So it's up to you. It's a matter of preferences and it doesn't really matter. So here, can you, see, here you can see uh, we use a Deb Helper and DH sequencer. And if you want to use Java Helper, you just pass with Java Helper to um, your DH command. Um, what, is, what else is important in this file? You can see two variables. Yes. Ah, I forgot. If you have any questions, just ask. It's a workshop, so yeah. I have a question because I learned that it's uh, frequently necessary um, that you add this UTF-8 uh, thingy. Is it isn't it possible to make it the default? Because it should, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I always need to add it. So, um, good. Uh, good question. Well, uh, I have asked the same question uh, <laughs> multiple times <laughs> on our mailing list. Uh, but um, there's one team member which uh, convinced me. Oh, okay, not really. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> if you see if you see this video. No. Um, uh, it's quite, quite difficult because there are multiple build systems and they default to, like Maven, to um, US ASCII. <laughs> and that's, I, I always think, why do, they do, why, do, why do they do it and don't change it to UTF? Um, but isn't what US ASCII not a subset of UTF-8, so nothing should yes. happen? Yeah, well, they have made it the default. So the, um, they argue that it is the job of the packager or the upstream maintainer to set the correct value. So they are not responsible for setting uh, a language feature. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Yes, it makes sense somehow, but we don't want to override um, um, upstream of the build systems. And um, well, I think it's uh, struggling against upstream isn't, in our best, uh, isn't the best way to, to spend our time. So what you can see here is the JH build command is called and we pass two um, options to it, Java C opts and Java doc opts. And well, we, we say, okay, please use UTF-8 UTF uh, as um, your preferred language. So otherwise the package wouldn't even compile. Yeah. What else can you see in this file is there are two variables called Java home and uh, class path. I've told you about class path before. So here we tell um, our Java helper program that he needs to look in user share Java OSGI dot annotation dot jar uh, to find the needed classes to build OSGI core. Um, our convention is to install system wide Java libraries into user share Java. Um, we have one unversioned Java uh, jar file and one versioned. Uh, jar file, and um, that's mostly important if you use build systems like ant or if you have no build system at all. Uh, those s for those build sy systems, it makes sense to store it in such a global um, directory. You will later learn that Maven has a different um, concept, and we install the same jar file multiple times as we just symlink to different directories because we have to keep a certain uh, layout for Maven. But at the moment, it's just important to know if you create a package, uh, you have to install at least one jar file and um, at least it should go into uh, user share Java. Yeah, Java Home is important. Um, I'm not sure if you need it anymore. Um, for Maven builds, you don't need it, I'm quite sure. but for um, non-build systems or end, I suggest you still use this 
line export Java Home so that um, the, the tools can find our default um, um, Java development kit, which is OpenJDK 10 at the moment and will be OpenJDK 11 in a few weeks. Next question. If it's the default, why not setting the default and just uh, do something else if it's Yes, not yes. Uh, as I said, it is default in for Maven builds already, so you don't mm. need it there anymore. Well, I put it stupidly in every rules file, this line Java Home equals to this yeah. one. So That's it could be included into Java, Java Helper and then it's, uh, you have shorter rule fi rules files. Yeah, you sometimes want to override it. Yeah, so then you override it. If, if you want to override it, do it. But if it's default, uh -huh. I don't know. Okay, Let, let's think about it. It makes sense, yes. So sometimes you want to override it, and then you have to look. Uh, just go to user lib jvm. So you can see there are multiple choices at the moment. Um, only we will keep only one for Buster, which is uh, OpenJDK 11. And um, okay, OpenJDK 8 will be kept just for development purpose, purposes, and um, it will receive no security support at all. So, okay. So, what else? Yeah. So there's a second command here. It's called JH Maven Repo Helper. I'm just uh, telling you about it, but. Um, uh, it's it's meant for uh, installing these um, jar files I mentioned before into a Maven repository. Um, so, and does nothing know do, does uh, not know about uh, Maven. And if you have no build system at all, of course it doesn't know um, how to install a Maven artifact, a jar file. So we have created tools like um, JH Maven Repo Helper or Maven Repo Helper, just Maven Repo Helper. Um, that install those files into a um, new directory, which is called user share maven repo. And here you can see different uh, packages already installed on my system. And they are, the layout is as follows. So you install those artifacts into user, user share maven repo. And it is the same namespace as um, as you would see in the package itself. So let's see for uh, lib 12 monkeys. Uh, no, where is it? Oh, let's just take another one. Let's take comments codec, and then you have comments codec, comments codec. So the first directory is the so-called group, and the second directory is the so-called artifact. And then you can see, oops, the version, 1.11, and uh, a Debian directory. So your artifact would be installed into the version uh, directory, but we also create a Debian directory for one purpose to be able um, to reuse one package uh, for everything. So in Java, it is very common. It is very version-centric. And we use it to, um, yeah, well, we save, we save uh, us time to package all these different versions, which is also not allowed in Debian. So we just package one version of Commons codec and use that version for everything. So even if another package depends on another version like 1.12, we just use the Debian version. So this creates uh, problems, of course, too. So <laughs> you have to constantly uh, modify or patch um, different packages if they are not uh, compat compatible with our Debian package. But it cannot be avoided because we want to, uh, uh, revo we want to uh, reduce code duplication and it's also a security concern if we uh, packaged multiple uh, versions of the same library. So in Debian, there's only, always only one library. Of course, there are exceptions, but the general rule is please package only one library and then try to make all your reverse dependencies uh, to work with it. 
So, yeah. So that's basically one way. JH uh, Maven repo helper is in Java helper. I just mentioned it here. You can use it, um, but I recommend to use a Maven repo helper instead, which is a separate package. Uh, let's see. So, this package enables Debian packages which are not using Maven in their build process to provide and install Maven POMs and libraries in the repository located in user share Maven repo. If you just use Maven or a Maven only build system, then you have to use Maven Debian helper instead. So, always remember if you are not using Maven, if you are either using Ant or Gradle or no build, sim build system at all, then please use. Um, either Java helper or Maven repo helper if you want to provide also those Maven artifacts. It makes it easier for other maintainers who have packages which, are, which rely only on Maven uh, to find your jar files which you have just packaged. If you only install them into user shared Java, uh, they won't find uh, those uh, jar files. It would be much more complicated for them. So if you, if you would like to, uh, want to be nice to them, please um, also use Maven repo helper to install those jar files. Okay. So that's it for no build, some build systems. Let's go to end. In uh, 2012, I packaged uh, MediaTek View, which is a German application to view and download public television streams. And that was my gateway or my yeah, well, my, my first package, uh, which I contributed to Debian. And as you can see, MediaTek View back in 2012, 2013 used AND. How can you see that? If it is AND, there's always a build.xml file. Oh, well, so XML looks, some say quite ugly, some say it is human readable. Well, you decide. And um, you can also see in this case that it uses uh, uh, and, uh, it references another project. It's called NB project, and that means the upstream developer used NetBeans at this time. It's an IDE for Java. And uh, it's, it's a bit specific, but if you come across such a package, always remember this is a NetBeans project. And if you want to modify th something, you could go to the NB project directory and just modify those XML files. So what options do you have if you want to build an end package? So you can, um, first of all, um, you have to modify, um, you can either modify the build file, and this is necessary because most upstream developers include other libraries in their package. So before you start even packaging, just take a look at the sources and remove all jar files and all class files. They don't do this out of uh, malice, but because they want to make it easier for other developers, it's more convenient to bundle everything together and um, yeah, it's, it's easier for Java developers. So if someone uses and he usually creates a lib directory and puts all those jar files into it. So in Debian, we can't do that because, yeah, well, it kind of violates our uh, principles. So just remove it. And then you can either patch the build XML file and change the, the path from lib to user shared Java because that's our uh, generic um, repository. Or you can recreate the lib directory, which you have previously deleted, and zoom link all jar files which are in user shared Java to this lib directory. Uh, how do you do that? So you can use Java helper again. Just go through the documentation. Again, our tutorial. And then uh, Oh no, change it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's take this one. 
So you can either use a file called link jars in your daemon directory, which looks like this one, and add one line for creating a lib directory, another line for creating a subdirectory, lib build, and a third line for creating a, a subdirectory runtime. Usually you only need the first line. And then all your build dependencies will be linked to this directory. Uh, so, I don't know, it's a matter of taste, I think. Um, you can either patch it, which might be look more clean, or you can use this helper tool. Um, the end product is the same. So, um, your build system will definitely find um, your uh, build dependencies and um, will run all necessary steps. So, Debian rules looks like this. Again, we use uh, Deb helper, and you have only to uh, add with Java helper again. And if you want to create Maven artifacts, then Maven repo helper is your tool of choice. And that's it, basically. So the other steps are generic uh, Debian overrides, which could happen in every other package, too. Another example, Electric. Electric is a nice application for, yeah, it's a CAD system that can um, design uh, circuits and um, IC layouts. It's also written in Java, and it also uses the end build system. Again, here you see that we don't lose link jars. There's also no sign that we use it in Debian rules. Again, we tell our build system that the class path where, where it can find all those dependencies um, is in user Java again. And here we list all our um, build dependencies as absolute, um, with absolute paths uh, separated by a column. And then we just add again with the Java helper. And that's it. So, in this case, I have decided to patch build XML and uh, remove um, unnecessary stuff and change the lib directory to, to user share Java here. You can see Java C is our compiler, and then you can um, put um, your, your build dependencies inside a class path um, element and um, point to, to your build dependencies and use a share at Java. It's, it's one way to achieve it. You can also use link jars. Again, it's a matter of taste and your choice. What else have you to remember about uh, end? Um, well, end is a very simple build system. It is um, meant as a build tool uh, in contrast to Maven, which is more like a framework and a project management tool. Um, if you can avoid it, or I think and is simpler, but our support for Maven is equally good at the moment, so you can choose. But it is simpler for beginners, in my opinion, so if you can choose, I suggest you, can, uh, you, use, um, you use and. But if you're not, I'll explain Maven in a few seconds. It's not complicated at all. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. That's Maven. Uh, Maven, yes. So as I said, Maven is more like a project management tool. Um, it is declarative, and it uses conventions. So if you look at a... Maven project, there's always, you can always find a structure. That makes it quite easy for Debian packages because you instantly know this is a Maven project. Uh, let's take a look at PDF SAM, which is a, well, PDF application. Uh, you instantly know that it is a Maven project if you see a pom.xml file. That's a Maven project. And The first thing you have to do is analyze, analyze 
the dependencies and check whether they are already present in Debian. So Maven dependencies are structured like this. You have a group ID, you have artifact ID, and you have a version. Um, if you want to find out if it already exists in Debian, I suggest use, for example, code search .debian.net. Just search for the name, and um, you could do something like hibernate path Debian control. And then code search would list you all possibilities or possible um, occurrences of Hibernate in your Debian control file. And you know, hey, there's a lib Hibernate file. So this is obviously packaged for Debian because it's a very important package. Hey. Oh, a question on versioning. Yeah. Um, is the version in Debian always guaranteed to be the same as the version in the Maven repo uh, for a given dependency? For, um, I think rather no. So let's say there's a version 1.1. It's exactly the same version as uh, in Maven Central or else. Uh, but, um, well, sometimes we modify, modify the content okay, because of uh, free software reasons, uh, for multiple reasons, but we only package one version. So you can be sure if we package version 1.1 that it is exactly the same version as in Maven Central. Maybe we have modified it, we added a patch. Okay, you can easily see this in, in, in our Devon directory. But, um, well, if you try to package something and you know the project requires version 1.2 of this specific library, you have to use 1.1 instead. Or you upgrade the package to 1.2 and then you have the same version. But then you have to make sure that all other reverse dependencies still work, continue to work. Right. So obviously that's kind <laughs> of that's a uh, bit tricky. Is there like uh, how do you, is there a quick way to tell if there's a difference other than like diffing it basically? Um, I know there's a tool like ABI a compliance checker in Java. Mm -hmm. So you could use uh, that to, to find out if you break something, the ABI. Well, but that's our daily business I say. Um, <laughs> we have to make sure that everything works. So the more important the library is, if you like an Apache Commons library, which is used by dozens of packages, then it can happen that something breaks. Well, and you have to fix, fix it then. Yeah. There's no other way. So we can only use one version, and you have two choices. You either upgrade the library, or you fix all reverse dependencies to make uh, it work with, with it. That's it, yeah. That makes it a bit that makes it a bit complicated. Um, that's true. Okay, um, so you can see all those different dependencies, and it's a good pra common practice, a good practice to to check do they exist in Debian. So this is your first step: check if they exist, and then decide if you want to package them. For example, you don't need to package everything. Sometimes you have a Maven project which consists of submodules like PDF SAM, but you only need one module. So obviously, you don't have to package um, dependencies for PDF SAM uh, merge if you only need PDF SAM FX. Um, what you can what you can do is the following. There's a so-called POMS file in your Debian directory. And you can see it lists all POM XML files in your project. So if you want to ignore some, some, something, just add the ignore option to it. And you will, you will, you will be done. And um, so don't worry about uh, too many build dependencies 
Keep it simple. If you don't need Java documentation, disable it. If you don't need tests, which require often different uh, build dependencies, disable the tests for, for the, uh, at the beginning and add them later if you need them, re really need them. So let's take a look at a tool which is called mhmake and um, which simplifies certain steps. It is a tool to uh, create um, to create an uh, initial Debian package. It is very simple and it only works if you have all build dependencies already installed in your system. Always remember that. It can't automatically fetch them from the internet and create you a, a package. At least not yet. So what can you do? You can run mhmake and then it asks a couple of questions. The name of your source package, the name of your binary package, do you want to run tests? As I said, no, it's too complicated for the moment. No, we don't want Jabberdog. And then it checks the license. It analyzes the POM. And now it asks you, uh, I found something here, um, a POM file. Do you want to ignore it? And if, it, if you see it is highlighted, the, the Y is uh, capitalized, yes. Then enter the version. And then it asks an important question. Change the version to the symbolic Debian version. As I previously said, uh, it is preferred that we change everything to, to Debian um, because you can just point all your other libraries and applications um, to this Debian version and they will still continue to work. They won't work if we would use different versions. So always use the Debian version unless you have a good reason not to. So, include all models. Yes. And then it asks again the question with the Debian version and you can press just enter. Okay. Well, it also knows whether a plugin is useful or not. In this case, the Maven source plugin is not useful for us because we always provide a source package in Debian, so we don't need this. You don't need Javadoc and other plugins. So just press yes. Ignore stuff. Test dependencies, yes. Okay, now this could be useful, no. So here's a problem. Ignore this dependency, Java X servlet. Um, if you're a Java developer, you would know the servlet API is packaged in Debian. It's kind of strange that he doesn't find it. I have installed it. But in this case, just ignore it again and hope it will work. So he um, just looks for another version of the um, Surflet API. He cannot find it. And then he will abort and just continue. If you're unlucky, um, it can happen that um, MIH make will just um, completely abort and you are left only with three or four files and they are not complete. And then you have to figure out um, how to, to, to add the additional information. But usually I recommend just take a look at other packages which, which are very similar to yours and just copy, um, just copy them. Just rename the package names and they, are, they look all very um, uniform and um, are very, very similar. No. So we just ignore the tests now and we ask another question about uh, the description of the package, if you want to add a description, and it fails. Okay, that is the so-called uh, presentation effect. So what you can see now is there's a Debian directory and it contains several files. And this is what I mean, it is incomplete. This worked before, um, but in this case, you are left with only the relevant Maven files. Let's see, what is a Maven rules file? Uh, in this case, um, you can see that your group ID, so th the file consists of group ID, artifact ID, uh, the type, and the version. 
And we always substitute the version with Debian. And the syntax is used is the same like set a stream editor. So if you want to change something, you use a Maven rules file. Um, if you want to modify a group ID, you would use this syntax. Um, just replace the word with another word you um, with another word you know. Um, yeah. So the another important file is Maven ignore rules. It's the exact opposite of Maven rules. Here you would just ignore uh, artifacts you don't need. Again, the structure is the same. First uh, column is the group ID. Second is artifact, and an asterisk means um, it can take uh, any value. So all those artifacts would be ignored, and the build system would just think, OK, ignore them. Last but not least, the next important file is poms. The poms file, um, it is if you create a package with uh, make, there's always um, some text explaining what the options mean. And here you can see that we ignore the parent pom by default. And we add another option, has package version. Some t um, has package version means uh, build, use the latest uh, or, or tell your um, build reverse dependencies that they should add a strict version dependency on your package. So they always depend on the latest version. Um, yeah, decide for yourself if you need it. Or you, can or you can use the option ignore to ignore certain artifacts. OK. Uh, we are running out of time. So I just mentioned two things. Take a look at PDF Sam if you want to package a Maven project, an application with Maven. If you want to package a library with Maven, use, for example, lib12monkeys Java, which is a very simple package, and model your package after this one. Uh, ignore submodules if you don't need them. And, well, if you have any questions, just talk to us on our mailing list, uh, Devin Java, or on our IRC channel, and we can answer them. So last but not least, I want to mention Gradle, which is the ultimate build system, very complicated, and very powerful, of course. <laughs> it's the only build system you will ever need, they say. Um, it's also uh, declarative, and it uses Groovy as a domain-specific language, so you can create your, you can modify every aspect of your build system with, with Groovy. It's very powerful, but for us, Debian packages is also very uh, complicated to create a proper package. It is much easier with Maven because it uses conventions, so you always find the same information in, in your source directory. In your source directory, there's the code. Then you have a main directory with uh, the application code and a test directory with the test code, and so on. In Gradle, this all can be very different. Um, remember, for Maven, you take uh, you use Maven Debian Helper, and if you package a Gradle application, use Gradle Debian Helper. Uh, Gradle Debian Helper is not as powerful as Maven Debian Helper, but it transforms um, all those dependencies which are in a build Gradle file, um, well, in a format which can be recognized by our Maven tools. So um, you usually, usually uh, the Gradle upstream will pull all dependencies from uh, Maven Central, and the Gradle Debian Helper will help you to, well, transform the very specific um, Gradle notations into something our build tools can understand. Just, just remember that. And otherwise, you have to patch the build Gradle file at the moment. So you have to remove stuff which uh, doesn't work, like methods or plugins which we haven't packaged yet, etc. Uh, it's a bit more complicated, so there's no magic tool which will create a package for you. Um, we have different um, Gradle packages in Debian. Just take a look, for example, for the recent version of MediatekView. Now it uses Gradle. Previously it used Ant. 
Uh, Mokito is a Java library that also uses Gradle. Check that out. Or APK tool. Okay. Um, uh, last words. Uh, some errors, common errors. If you see fail to execute goal, one of its dependencies could not be resolved and the artifact XYZ has not been downloaded from it. That usually means either you haven't added the build dependencies to Debian control or you've got the Maven rules file wrong. So the artifact name or the group ID is XY, but you wanted to call it banana. So it is named banana in Debian. So you have to use Maven rules to transform XY into banana. And uh, always remember that is most likely a problem uh, with, uh, with your Maven rules file or you haven't added the package to build dependencies. Secondly, the package XYZ does not exist or I cannot find symbols. That also means either you haven't added the build dependencies to Debian control or the library is too new or too old and they have just removed the class in the newer version or removed the method this can always be happen. And last but not least, I previously mentioned unmappable character for encoding US ASCII. Well, then you have to pass one of the encoding options of AND, Maven, or Gradle uh, to, to um, Debian, to Deb Helper, um, to change that. So, yeah, well, that's all. Um, the last thing I want to mention is our documentation is not very good at the moment. I want to change. I want to change it, and um, I will within the next days update our wiki at uh, wiki.debian.org, Java slash packaging, and add more information to it so you can carefully read it again and you don't have to rewatch rewatch um, the talk. And I hope we can extend on it and um, well create more information to make it more. Yeah, to make it easier for other packages uh, to package Java applications. I thank you all for coming and see you around. <laughs>